Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of uh, Golan Cafe and uh, today it's uh, a tutorial about concurrency and goroutines and we're going to explore goroutines and weight groups and how to synchronize goroutines. So let's get started with a simple example I've uh, just created for you. This is a very simple file and contains a function called cook so it's cooking some foods and uh, we have uh, four different foods. We have mushroom pizza, we have pasta, uh, kebab and uh, cake. And uh, what it does, it loops through these four different foods and invokes the function cook. Then uh, it prints the execution, the total execution time that it took for cooking all these foods. and. Uh, for each of, uh, as you can see in this function here, so let's go to to the place where the actual cooking is uh, happening. So in the function that is uh, cooking the foods, as you can see, there is a time to sleep, and uh, each uh, food is basically taking uh, two seconds uh, to cook. This is a very simple example, but uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's reminiscent of uh, and very similar to uh, a lot of situations that you may encounter when you write code code. So you have a lot of situations where um, there is, for example, a list of uh, functions or resources that you need to fetch from the internet, for example, and uh, fetching the, from the internet is very slow, or a list of uh, uh, CPU intensive tasks and uh, you need to execute those uh, CPU intensive tasks uh, in in a you know in a more concurrent fashion, but more often than not is uh, is more um, executing concurrently I/O type of uh, operations like when you fetch uh, data from the internet, uh, which may take two seconds in this case, or it may take more, or it could be for example uh, reading a file from disk. Or any kind of uh, any kind of uh, I/O operation, really. So this is kind of an oversimplification, but you can imagine this function cook to be something that uh, is very expensive to execute and is very slow to execute. So let's see how this plays out. So as you can see, starting to cook mushroom pizza, two seconds, uh, and then cooking pasta, two seconds, cooking kebab, cooking cake. And as you can see, it completes in a little over eight seconds, as you may have expected already. So how, how do we usually go about um, trying to speed up uh, operations in Go using concurrency? Uh, we use, obviously, Go routines, and Go routines uh, can be invoked using the, um, the Go keyword. So something that we do is uh, we uh, in the place where we have um, a very slow function, uh, we try to co to make that function concurrent so that it takes um, so that it takes um, all the all, it takes all the power of uh, your computing your computing environment uh, and uh, it gets executed uh, concurrently by the Golang runtime. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, um, I usually go and I create an anonymous function in this case, um, which looks like this. So the anonymous function is uh, just, let's remove this for now and let's see. So this is an anonymous function without the go. This is an anonymous function. This is just a the function definition without a name and then we invoke that anonymous function itself. So it's just a very uh, idiomatic way and a very quick way to create an anonymous function. Uh, and then you put the go keyword in front of that anonymous function so that can be made uh, can be spawned in a concurrent fashion. Uh, we pass the food, uh, we pass the food to that anonymous function. We define that uh, it is we take a food, and then uh, we call the very slow function in, in, inside here. And this is basically um, our concurrent version of this. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, it exits in 13 microseconds. And uh, the reason why it exits in 13 microseconds is uh, because it's because when you look through the the foods and uh, and you create a new a new uh, go routine, what happens is that it, for each uh, for example, the first uh, the first step would be the mushroom pizza. A new go routine is spawned, is created, 
uh, and so for the second item, which is the pasta, kebab, and cake. So for each of those, it has been uh, created a new routine. But then there is there isn't any any way that uh, that uh, the main function uh, knows when all those go routines are done. So they're kind of lost in their way and. And we usually you usually need a way to synchronize uh, the main function, which is the main execution uh, execution path, with uh, your concurrent go routines, because you have to think about the main function being a go routine itself, and uh, it needs to be synchronized uh, with uh, other go routines. They don't magically know about the state of other go routines, and this is something that you know as a pro as a go programmer you have to do yourself. So how do you usually go about that? So there is, uh, you know, one of the ways, because there are many ways, but one of the ways uh, that I like to approach it is uh, by using weight groups. And um, weight group is, uh, as, as you can see from the doc, is a very, very small package. Uh, it's part of the standard library coming from the uh, sync package, uh, which is for concurrency and synchronization. And uh, it, is, it is very small and very simple. And uh, it is used to synchronize a collection, a collection of, uh, of coroutines. And uh, as the package description says, waits for a collection of coroutines to finish. So it's basically uh, uh, trying to fix the, the, the issue we just had here, where we have many coroutines spawning being created, but the main coroutine just quits because it doesn't have context, it doesn't know when those coroutines finish or it, it, it's, it's not aware of, of the status of those coroutines. Um, so so let's let's just go through the docs and what it says, the main coroutines calls add to set the number of coroutines to wait for, then each of the coroutines runs and calls done when finished. At the same time, uh, wait can be used to block until all coroutines are finished. So we just have three simple methods. The first one is add which uh, it's telling the, the main go routines, uh, the main go routine, how many go routines we need to wait for. Then uh, there is another method called done, which is, uh, which is called when uh, the go routine has finished. And then there is a wait, which uh, uh, will block. So the execution uh, uh, will block until all go routines inside this wait group that we are tracking inside the wait group are finished. So let's see how we can uh, implement this on our example. So the first thing we need to do is uh, is to create a wait group variable, so that uh, we can uh, we can track uh, the execution of coroutines. So you've just created a, a very simple uh, wait group uh, um, a variable, and uh, let's just import. Uh, the package from the sync uh, package from the standard library uh, and then there is a, the, the, the one of the first steps you need to do is to basically tell the weight group uh, how many go routines you are you know how many go routines we need to wait for so in this case it will be four go routines it will be one for each foot because you are basically we are calling go routines each time for each foot so you could uh, even uh, you know we could even uh, add it uh, we could even add it here uh, but I usually prefer to uh, usually prefer to add it on top here and and you know that uh, you have to wait for uh, four routines to finish um, then if we go back to the to the documentation uh, we have uh, done. So then each of the goroutines runs and codes done when finished. So when the goroutine is finished, so when we know that the actual goroutine is finished, we call uh, wait group done. So we know that uh, uh, cook is very slow, and once this is finished, uh, we can call wait group done. So this is this will will uh, will do the job. And then the last one is basically, uh, it's basically to wait for all go routines to finish. So let's just go here quickly. So we just added a uh, weight group, new weight group. Um, then we have the, uh, we, we told the weight group how many go routines we are planning to, to use and to wait for. 
uh, we added the, the down call uh, after the go routine has finished and we waited for the go routine. So let's see how this now uh, unfolds. As you can see, uh, they, they started basically almost at the same time. Uh, they started at the same time. Almost, I say almost because they actually didn't start at the same time. So there was a little bit of, uh, you know, a microseconds. You, you can actually, you cannot actually see by, by just looking at the screen. But, uh, you know, there was a little bit of, uh, of, of delay one after the other because they are still in a loop and they are still being scheduled by their own time. Um, and all together, if you look again, if you look at the old version, uh, if you look at the old version all together, uh, took just a little over two seconds, uh, which is, uh, you know, which is uh, much less than eight seconds that we saw before. And this is and this is basically how we how we work uh, with the uh, coroutines and uh, with wake groups. So the wake groups is one of the ways. Uh, there are other ways as well. There are channels, which you're gonna see in another video as well. Uh, but uh, wake groups it's a very very powerful tool and a very simple tool to understand as well. So. I hope you enjoy the video and you learn something about coroutines and weight groups. Thanks.